Welcome. In this video, we'll start to talk about market segmentation. What that means is grouping individuals into collections of or segments of the market where people's purchasing, buying, economic behavior are correlated in some way. Certain segments buy like those in certain segments buy like other people in that same segment, but differently than people in other segments. So that's what we'll focus on in this uh, this particular lecture um, in the marketing uh, arena. Now you have to make sure that you clarify your segmentation when you're developing your business plan, which segments you're going after, because that's how you limit your marketing messages so that you get to specific people that will respond to them. A broadcast of general information creates awareness. It doesn't create buying decisions. Buying decisions come from conversations or messages that you get to a customer, a potential customer, where they resonate with what you're saying because you're talking to them and they realize you're addressing their business problem or their personal issue that they're trying to resolve. They, they resonate with it because you're talking to them. That's why you have to have this notion of what segments you're dealing with. Segmentation is this idea of breaking up this monolithic huge market into groups of individuals that have similar buying patterns or buying habits. They do. They have similar needs. They, they want to address the world or deal with problems in a similar way. It could be that they're a similar age. It could be that they're male and female. It could be that they're college students versus not. It could be different kinds of things that cause them to have similar set, sets of problems in their day-to-day -day life that they have to deal with. There's several obvious ones. Demographic, we talked about age. Somebody who's young, say 18 to 25, deals with certain types of issues. They're going to school, they have to drive, they have to get books, they have time issues, schedule issues. Um, somebody who's 59 and, and older is looking at retirement, retirement plans, where they might live, um, that sort of thing. In the middle, you're talking about jobs and careers vacations, families, those sorts of things. Young parents have one set of issues. Parents with children going to college have a different set of issues that they're dealing with, different problems. That's the demographic. Geographically, people in Long Island have different problems than people in Florida or people in California. They have different, buy different buying behaviors. Uh, the food is different. The clothing is different. The weather is different. Um, the lifestyle is different. And so geography not even, I'm talking broadly, but even locally, different neighborhoods uh, in Garden City versus Valley Stream versus um, Queens are different, have different behaviors or different types of needs that need to be addressed. Psychographic gets more to personal buying behavior. People want to be, uh, want to express their own personal needs. Certain people have hobbies that they like. They like to, uh, to, to drive. They're crazy about cars. They're sports aholics or they they simply like to be the first on their block with a new product, right? They're early adopters. Some other people don't really care and they're one of the last people to buy things. There's also behavioristic things that, um, are, that describe um, what people do. People that do a lot of shopping versus people that don't do a lot of shopping. Uh, the sports idea I was mentioning earlier is really more appropriate to behavior than psychographic because you're talking about people that are involved in hockey, have needs for hockey or people that are doing lacrosse need to buy the right scout sorts of shoes and the right kind of equipment. Um, they have uh, different types of, uh, of periodicals, magazines, anything that they might purchase. So there are behavioral things, psychographic, geographic, demographic. There are other ways that you can segment the market. Keep in mind what we're thinking about here generally is people's needs that they have in their life, the problems they're trying to solve are in some way related to one another. They're correlated, so their buying behaviors are similar. So when you talk to them, you're talking to a group, but each of them feels that you're addressing the needs that they face in their day-to-day -day life that can be quite specific to their particular lifestyle. Other things that affect buying behavior are your roles. Parents have different buying behavior than young people, children, single people. Um, Somebody who is a professional on Wall Street or in a law firm might have different buying behaviors than someone who, who works outside, right? Different sorts of things they purchase, different ways they interact with the world. 
Um, th these are the sorts of roles. There's also different reference group. I consider myself, say, a university professor. I may have buying behaviors that I don't want to necessarily um, go against my reference group. There's certain cars you drive, certain cars you don't drive, that sort of thing. And you want to sort of fit in to the people that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. It's also class things. Certain people dress different ways depending upon their social class and, and, uh, and their cultural background. Uh, people want to wear or act in certain ways that um, are supportive of their culture. The, um, there's a bit of a controversy around the, uh, uh, the Miss America pageant recently. Um, a, an American who, with Indian descent Won the, award, won the prize and she had done a native or a, a dance that was reminiscent of the, um, of the Indian culture and that shows that she has lifestyle things that support her cultural upbringing and that might affect some of her purchasing decisions as any of us would with our own personal backgrounds. The kinds of food we eat, the sorts of uh, magazines we might read have these sorts of elements as well. So this is another way that you can think about segmenting your market. All of these you need to be dealing with. So let's try a little bit of, uh, of uh, figuring out what sorts of segments people might be in and how their, how their environment might affect their buying behavior. Let's take a look at this. Tony chooses to eat pasta for lunch every day. Likely he's responding to his social role as a father, his admiration for sports figures that he would like to emulate as a reference group, his social class as a professional attorney, or his cultural history as an Italian-American. Why don't you think about that and give us an answer. Okay, let's try another one. Which of the following is Marina likely to buy in her social role as a new mother? A minivan to ferry around a family? The same BMW that her favorite movie star just bought? The Lexus Coupe that her neighbors drive? Or the new Tata Motors car from India that was just imported because she is proud of her Indian ancestry? All right, pick one. All right, let's look at one more. When Jiang he only buys tailored suits. He's likely responding to his social role as a father, his admiration for successful entrepreneurs, his social class as a wealthy professional attorney, or his cultural history as Chinese. Pick one. Okay, you can look online for some comments on your answers once we get the, uh, the various answers, okay? So uh, the next, in the next uh, lecture, whoop, we got one more here. Try one more. When Felicia decides to buy a red iPod, red iPod, I don't know if you remember that. That's uh, an AIDS thing. Um, she is, uh, the money, some of the money goes to AIDS. Uh, she is likely responding to her social role as a student, her admiration for certain celebrities like Bono, who she emulates as a member of a reference group, her social position as an upper middle class, or her cultural heritage as an American. You can think about that and make a selection. Okay, like I said, we'll give you some feedback on these when you put your responses in. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about once you've got your segmentation down or you think you do, and you could gather more data about this and change some of that as you go for your product, um, we'll talk about how you gather marketing data and we'll do that in our next lecture.